One of the things I love about gardening and landscaping is how diverse it is. And with that diversity, you can unleash your creativity. Let's take it to a place yep, I'm making a living artwork out of succulents, a bit of plywood and some recycled timber. So what we've got is two sheets of marine ply, store bought, not cut, and some H3 treated pine that's been cut down to size. Now, if you're not real good with a circular saw, you can get them to cut each of these lengths for you, but you will need a jigsaw to cut out the pattern in the middle. The frame's just butt joint. It doesn't get much simpler than that. With any luck, that should match my plywood. The kid down at Bunnings knows what he's doing. This is actually the backboard, and I can put it on now, but the front I need to keep loose because I still need to work with it in my pattern. So this is going to be the top. I'm not screwing it down because I need to cut something out with a jigsaw, but I'm using the frame to keep it up off the table. Don't want to go past the line because I'll expose the frame, but now I'm just going to draw a freehand tree. OK, I'm happy with my tree shape, so I'm just drilling some pilot holes and then I'm cutting it out using a jigsaw. OK, so at the moment it looks like a cloud, but if I put a trunk on it, it'll look like a tree. Council Throwout is a great place to shop. I found this beautiful piece of antique Oregon. Now, what I'm going to do is create a trunk out of it, and it'll create a bit of 3D, a bit of depth, going from the flat plane ply to the succulents and then the trunk. Once the cutouts are done, give them a sand and smooth off the edges. I'm going to plant into sphagnum moss, and the price adds up if you're buying a lot of it. So I've got an internal frame, which just minimises how much I have to use. So all these internals that come in contact with the peat moss, I'm going to give them a coat of paint. It'll just work like a sealer and give it a little bit more protection. Even though I've sealed it to protect the timber, it's still important for excess water to get away, so I'm putting in three large drainage holes. So what we've actually made is a shallow pot, and we're going to make it even tougher by hanging it on the wall. If I use normal potty mix, gravity would come into play. Next time you water it, it would all go south. But if I use sphagnum moss, it's light and it holds heaps of moisture. One bag like this will cost you about 30 bucks. That's a negative. But fill it with water, it expands to about three times the size, and that's the positive. One bag in here will be plenty. Piece of chicken wire, just nailed off with a staple gun. We'll keep the sphagnum moss in place until the root system of our plants takes over. I'll give it the strength that keeps it all together. OK, now I'm just attaching the front with the tree cut out using screws. Trunk goes in and you can see that it looks like a tree. But to dress up the box, because I've got these exposed screw holes, is I'm going to bring that in a little bit and frame it in some old decking that I also found and give it a little bit more depth by raising the edge. Now, you can go down to Bunnings and buy beautiful little succulents like this. They look like cupcakes for 3 to $4 each. The next size up is about the $7 to $8 mark, but they'll make a massive impact. But if you don't like the idea of spending money, succulents grow dead easy from cuttings. You don't have to worry about roots. You don't have to worry about propagating them. Stick them in and they will grow. Now, if you've got friends and families or even a stranger, knock on the door and ask if you can take a couple. Because if I know one thing, I know plant people are good sharers. Don't be too scared or intimidated by bashing up the roots on these. All you need to leave is kind of like the little tube that they've come out of. Then make your hole with your planting stick. And then around the chicken wire, I push the peat moss in so that the plant's stable where it is. Remember, eventually I want to tip this up on a wall. How cute is that? Doesn't look a million dollars. And you're looking at it upside down. So imagine what it looks like when you turn it around. Now, this one's pretty elaborate. I've gone to the effort with the jigsaw to cut out the tree and the trunk and framed it up with the hardwood. But you could really dump it down and keep it quite simple. A long, skinny rectangle will look fantastic on your outdoor table setting. And a square, either on the wall or used as a pot, 
looks a million dollars as well. And don't forget, they'll work indoors, just watering them with a mister, but they look absolutely stunning and at home outside in the garden.